All right, happy Tuesday. This is my short video, hopefully trying to complement your notes. Policymaking, it's the biggest of the umbrella terms in this unit. In other words, this concept is going to be the broadest category from which underneath that, we can identify all these other subcategories. And that's going to relate to the executive branch, the president, and also Congress. So that's why we're starting with this lecture. Um, in regards to policymaking, I'm kind of breaking it down into the general details of like the who, the what, the where, etc. First off, agenda setting is the idea that with so many issues in the world, so many issues in our country, our federal government realizes they can't solve all of them, or at least they can't take on all of them one on one, right? So agenda setting is the idea that you shape policy in efforts to help the most people or in efforts to deal with the most pressing issues. As we learned last unit, political ideology plays a huge role in influencing the preferences and the beliefs of individuals in terms of what are the most pressing issues or what are the best ways to solve these issues. Further connecting to last unit, there's a notion that we the people play a role. And the way that we the people play a role is that we, we, we become informed and want to then place emphasis or more pressure on political leaders. The issue attention cycle represents not only the role of the news media in telling us what's going on, but also how we the people kind of lose steam, lose energy, lose focus on certain topics. I wish COVID could have been something that's been lost in the issue attention cycle, but it's still here, right? But you could probably imagine something, something that was topical, trending, whatever, in the last couple of years that now just doesn't seem to be as big of a deal, doesn't seem to have as much attention. With that being said, policy formulation is when Congress and the president are preparing to figure out what to do. And how much to do is really where we see this categorization. Notice the three categories. And I order them in terms of the order of the likelihood. A non-decision, or in other words, not actually doing anything, is the most common response. An incremental or a brief, short, minor adjustment, like, oh, let's add a little money here to that program, a little money there, is the most common, or excuse me, the next most common. The least common in terms of the quantity or quality of how much the government does is a comprehensive or a punctuating change. Those two, are, those two are synonymous for the same type of policy. And that would be a major change, like the Affordable Care Act. That was a punctuating change. Doesn't happen that often. Or when the Department of Homeland Security was created, adding a whole new department to the president's cabinet, a punctuating change, a comprehensive change. And again, these are major shifts in political views, major shifts in the role of the government. You can pause the video and read through this and try to figure out what is a simple resolution mentioned? Like, how does it represent one of the three examples of how much to do? Hopefully you pause and thought about it. Now, in terms of the implementation, this is also reflective of your ideological views. And this is who should do the change. For liberal ideology, obviously more federal government is the answer in most cases. For conservative or libertarian ideology, often it's the private sector. In other words, not the government. And this is often, you know, in real policymaking is really a mix. It's never really strictly one or the other. But still, this categorization helps you. With all this being said, this was a short lecture because it's meant to get you ready now to add more subcategories under the idea of policymaking. As we're going to see, the Constitution lays out some pretty, pretty clear guidelines, but there's still room for ambiguity and still room for interpretation. So for the rest of today, you should be going off and learning about the president's role in all this. And then later this week, we'll talk about Congress and other groups. All right, everyone.